Good afternoon to you. Mark Seventh Hurricane Track here Monday now, the 21st day of April 2025. Great to be back with you off last week, spending time with the family during their spring break and a much needed vacation for my wife. But I'm back and boy, I'm telling you, things are getting ready to get busy in my world. Uh, severe weather season, getting ready to do some stuff out in the Great Plains. We'll talk about that at the end of today's update. But first, very important, the Pacific is starting to cool again versus where we were just a few weeks ago. I'll show you all of that and much more in today's update. It's a busy one today. Lots of tabs open. So let's get started, shall we? Again, thanks for tuning in. Let's see where we go from here. Let's start off with the SOI, a general easy way to see the pressure pattern across the tropical Pacific. And when these numbers are all positive like we're seeing here, that's typical of a La Nina type pattern. But what is so very important, it's not El Nino. Not having an El Nino is such a big positive check mark, if you will, for the Atlantic Basin. Just not having the warm inso typically helps the Atlantic Basin to produce. And as I'm going to show you over these next few tabs up here on the old Firefox browser, I don't see any reason to doubt that this hurricane season will be a continuation of a fairly busy period that we've seen these last several years. So the SOI, uh, again, it's that pressure difference between Tahiti and Darwin, which is in Australia, Darwin is, and they're all out in the Southwest Pacific. And again, when these numbers are positive, and as you see, they've been positive for quite a while here, some of these numbers strongly positive, a few negatives in there, but they were very short lived. And that means that the pressure pattern is not conducive for El Nino. Now, way back on April 1st, we were starting to wonder, well, maybe uh, we are going to have some kind of a warm event because the equatorial Pacific here, at least the eastern part of it, was warming up pretty substantially. Now let's fast forward all the way to basically now. Look how that's changed pretty darn drastically overall. And you notice, too, pretty cold off the Baja, extending down into the tropical Pacific with only a limited area of above normal anomalies through here in the tropical eastern Pacific. So that's going to be key because the less activity that we see, you should write this one down, this was important, the less activity we see in the East Pack usually means that the Atlantic will be the one that dominates. So in a few weeks, uh, May 15th is the official start of the East Pacific season, so we're less than a month away from that. And then we get into the Atlantic hurricane season shortly thereafter. So we'll have to watch this very closely. The Eastern Pacific starting to cool off again in the equatorial region. Not much warmth there relative to average overall. It's not screaming El Nino, that is for sure. I mean, I think we can pretty much take it to the bank. No El Nino this year. And then we'll start watching to see how much activity do we get and how prolific is that activity if we do get it. A big key to what could happen with the Atlantic hurricane season. All right. So another way to look at all this, of course, is through charts and graphs. And a lot of different agencies produce those. One such is out of Columbia, their climate school. And you can see different bar charts and plots. And they're just fascinating. And the bottom line, again, it's very important to point out, we do not anticipate an El Nino at all. Uh, let me see if I can pop this up into a bigger image. I sure can. Thank you very much. So the time period that we're most interested in is right here, August, September, October. And the biggest key here, I'm going to emphasize it over and over, no El Nino. I mean, it's on here, less than 20% chance. The probability is very low. And in fact, as we go through time, the probability of La Nina coming back increases, whereas the probability of El Nino increases, but it's just negligible. The you know more reasonable scenario is neutral conditions, as you can see with the gray. But again, I'm telling you, done this long enough, and it's very easy to understand, just not having El Nino is a big impact, a big positive indicator for Atlantic Basin hurricane activity. And it does not look like we're going to have an El Nino, whether you look at it on the bar chart or through these different plots. And I like this because it's interactive. And you can look at all the different ones here. But I think the two that are most important are the dynamical average, which is in the August, September, October time frame, just this side of cool neutral, so a little cooler than average. And then the statistical average, which is sitting in there, that green line, also just south, if you will, of neutral, cool neutral. 
no El Nino. That is the big thing. That's the headline here. No El Nino <clears throat> for the 2025 hurricane season, it would appear. Now, we still have a little bit of time left on what we call, trying to drop me out here. Come on. Bye-bye. Uh, the spring predictability barrier clock. As we move through spring, the climate models are trying to figure out the natural changes that are going on with trade winds and sea surface temperatures versus maybe something happening in the longer term. And it's just this weird, weird fuzzy period. We're almost through that. And uh, none of the models are responding with any kind of a spike towards El Nino. And I think that's going to give us an active season once again. So once we get there, we're not there yet, but just starting to draw your attention to it a little bit here. Once we get to June, these are the areas that we will be looking at all through here for potential development, even in late May. Start watching for that Central American gyre to set up somewhere out here in the Western Caribbean. And uh, we have to watch and see because these tracks do often come up into the Gulf and into the Southeast, maybe something towards Texas. And these can be prolific rainmakers. And rain is a significant impact. And to that end, come on for a second and talk to you, not at you, as I like to say, we will be emphasizing impacts over numbers more than ever before this year. Categories, wind speeds, they matter. They have their place. But I think that place is down here. Impacts is much, much more important. So we're going to emphasize rain and storm surge, maybe the danger from falling trees, the tornado risk from these systems. It's all about what happens to you at the end of the day. We want to make sure you stay alive, keep you safe, and share our collective knowledge on how to get you there. All right, so impacts over numbers this year, I think, is going to be our big theme. So once we get to June, these are the areas that we will be watching. And believe me, Gene will be here before we know it. All right, so today, at least, nothing to worry about out there in the tropics. Some severe weather potential. We'll get to that in a minute. I just want to point out a few interesting things. Good snow cover up here through the Rockies and in the Pacific Northwest, down the spine of the Sierras there. That's awesome. We need the snow melt to commence and all that fresh water to be deposited in the various basins out there. By the way, it looks like a pretty... Uh, at least a fair chance of a good monsoon this year out in the desert southwest. I will be back out there for that, probably sometime late July into early August. I love it. It's amazing. Also, out in the Midwest here, we'll be out soon enough studying mainly hail. I'll talk about that as we wrap up today. But at least for now, nothing coming out of the tropics to trade winds. Briskly th flowing through the Caribbean. And uh, the wind shear is just too strong. It's not hurricane season, so we don't have to worry about it right now. So here's an interesting post from our good friend Ben Knoll. Uh, have you thought that, man, we seem to have had a lot of tornadoes this year so far? Well, you would be correct. 571 tornadoes reported so far, 50% more than normal. And hopefully this won't continue. But I find it interesting because once we get into tropical cyclone season, remember... Tornadoes can uh, form from hurricanes, especially in those outer bands. We saw that last year with Milton, a couple of EF3s down there in, in uh, southeast Florida that were just monster tornadoes. Looked like, and I remember it was ironic, I was telling people in one of my updates, it's one of the times I got it wrong, I said, oh, the tornadoes from hurricanes like Milton typically aren't like those on the plains. And then what do you know? The ones from Milton looked exactly like what we would see on the plains, those big wedge tornadoes. No good, uh, but my point is, once we get to tropical cyclone season, some hurricanes and tropical storms, if we look at Beulah, for example, what was that, 1967? That was a big-time tornado producer, and these counts can go right back up if we start to see a plateau, hopefully, in the next few weeks. But, as I'm going to show you, I don't think we're going to slow down very much. We're already 50% ahead of schedule, and I think it's just going to stay busy off and on here, and then we get into hurricane season, and a stark reminder, I mean, Milton was a great example. Hurricanes can be tornado producers as well. You've already got all that spin in the atmosphere. So again, a, a really interesting post here from our friend Ben Knoll. Today, nothing right now. I'm putting this video together a little bit before 1 p.m. As you might know, heating of the day happens later, and the severe weather pops up uh, towards evening hours, but not much out there right now. A few river Flood warnings along the Mississippi, as you would imagine. Some other aerial flood warnings from just too much darn rain 
in uh, these green areas and then your red flag warnings in parts of the plains because it's an active period still very windy out there with storm system after storm system rolling across the country luckily though nothing too prolific today a few greens these darker greens your marginal risk this is tomorrow slight risk out here in the texas panhandle into oklahoma and parts of kansas i imagine part of this will get an enhanced once we get to tomorrow and the details get refined you know how that goes uh, and then a little bit of a risk here in the carolinas of some uh, severe weather marginal so we'll keep an eye on that finally by day three this would be wednesday uh, again right out here boy i wish i could just teleport out there but our time is coming i'll talk about that in just a moment um, we have a role to play in severe weather and i'll explain that shortly but by wednesday we have another uh, round of severe weather setting up in the darker green area that you see there just stay aware right stay on top of it if you're traveling through there you have airline flights that could be impacted you know what that's a good segue into this ice chip it's more than what you just get out of the freezer or whatever to cool your drink it is an interesting project you remember last year if you've been following our channel for any length of time I decided seemingly out of thin air I know people in my circle were like what the hell <laughs> it's like I want to study hail I think it's an underrated underappreciated hydrometeorite that and I know it's got a, a big economic cost and lo and behold I was right a lot of other people were thinking the same thing we all had an epiphany at the same time late 2023 going into last year 2024 and lo and behold we started our own little hail project so part of that will be that we will collaborate we're not officially part of the ice chip project here but we will certainly lend our observations we're going to be working uh, as collaborative partners with uh, the institute for business and home safety ibhs dr ian giamanco uh, we're going to test some roof panels with gopro cameras to show high speed uh, video of hailstones hitting you can slow it down and see it in slow motion it's just amazing what we can do and here's the connection using wait for it remotely operated cameras yeah that's the connection here i thought there's got to be a way that we can use the technology that we're using in hurricanes to study hail because i'm not going to stand out there with a whole catcher's outfit and try to see hail or photograph it or whatever that's just dumb not going to do it plus i don't want to be hit by lightning so we have taken our vehicle my uh, uh toyota tacoma outfitted it with this huge hail guard and we can mount all kinds of equipment on top numerous cameras and let the magic happen and we're going to start doing that next week we're going to head out cj and myself one of our colleagues we're going to go out to the plains and start participating in the study of hail and as you look at this i'll put a link to this in today's uh description of today's video hail 10 billion dollars a year of damage on average some years it's even more in the multiple tens of billions a huge economic impact and in, 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 you know from farming uh to ranching uh, transportation you know think of all the car lots that could get pelted by hail roofs and then the other side of this another colleague of mine dr hal needham out of southeast texas he's learned more and more about the fraud that goes on in the insurance industry related to hail so there's a huge economic incentive to learn more about this incredible hydrometeorite that's just a fancy way of saying hail something that falls from the sky uh, liquid or frozen and we're going to do just that year two of our version of the hail project and uh, we hope to be able to contribute some good data to the ice chip project and develop a database of our own of hail and what it does and how it forms and we're going to do a lot of exciting things with it which i will talk about more later probably in a separate video discussion all right so the tropics an interesting topic for today to wrap this up and put a bow on it and get it online for you yes the pacific cooling again hurricane season now fast approaching this will really start to matter again not having that el nino very very important to these pretty sensational high-end forecasts we're starting to see no forecast calling for below average activity this i think supports that idea all right and with that have yourselves a great rest of your monday i'll be back later in the week i don't know exactly what day but i'll give you an update later on in the week to 
see what's happening out there. Maybe talk about the severe weather for next week and other stuff. But, yes, I will be back sometime before the end of the week. Until then, have a great rest of your Monday. I know I already said that, but I'll say it again. And I'll also say thanks for watching. I'm Mark Seth of Hurricane Track. We all appreciate you tuning in. I'll talk to you again in a few days.